The Kraft Foods Company presents Willard Waterman as the Great Gildersleeve. The Great Gildersleeve is brought to you, transcribed by the Kraft Foods Company. Twenty years ago, the Kraft Foods Company introduced a wonderful new salad dressing, a superbly smooth, delicious salad dressing called Miracle Whip. Miracle Whip was so remarkably good that it soon became the most popular salad dressing ever created. Now Miracle Whip outsells the next 20 leading brands of salad dressing combined. And good cooks everywhere depend on it to make their salads taste better. To bring out the best in your salad, use the one and only Miracle Whip salad dressing. Well, there's an air of mystery about the great Gildersleeve's house today, and it seems to center around the kitchen. Bertie waited until everybody got out of the house, then she went to work. Now, the same gentle breeze that tugs the autumn leaves from the trees is bearing the pleasant aroma of something baking out of the kitchen and down the street. Mm-hmm. Bertie's a modest cook, but even Bertie's got to admit that cake smells good. I better leave the spoons in the bowl for Leroy to lick. Now, let me take one more peek in the oven, easy like. Mm-hmm. Like I thought, that cake's okay. That cake's good enough to win a prize in anybody's county fair. Now, if nothing happens to make it fall, I got a cake that is a cake. Yeah? I got a cake in the oven. I know. We smelled it five blocks away. Yeah. You ran all away. Not so loud, Marvin. That cake will fall. If it does, I'll catch it. <laughs> hey, Bertie, can we have a big slice when it's ready? Ain't nobody getting a slice of this cake. Bertie's entering this cake in the county fair. Yeah? That is, if it turns out good and don't fall. I am the door again, Leroy. I'm hungry. <laughs> <laughs> Marvin, you're quite a kidder. Who's kidding? Bertie, how about us scraping the mixing bowl? Well, I saved the spoon in the bowl for you boys there on the sideboard. I get the bowl. I get the bowl. Now, if you boys ain't quiet, you'll get the gate. Now, there's two spoons, so dig in. Boy, this is good. Marvin, not so fast. It's the only way I'll get in. <laughs> hmm, this is great, Bertie. It was great. Thank you. Bertie, I didn't know you were entering a cake contest. Well, I've been keeping it a secret. Now, don't you tell Miss Gilfley. Why not? If I win, we'll tell him. But if I lose, he don't have to know nothing about it. Oh, you'll win. Besides, don't know you're the best cook in the world. <laughs> Could be. But Bertie's like the New York Yankees. Every year she's got to prove it. <laughs> <laughs> hey, how do I know Bertie's such a good cook? She hasn't proved anything to me. And I ain't gonna prove nothing to you with this cake. Now, you two scoop. I got to take it out the oven and get to the market. Oh, go ahead. We'll wash it for you. Uh-uh, uh-uh. I ain't trusting nobody with this cake. Hello, I'm home. Bertie? Leroy? Where is everybody? Smell something good in the kitchen. Wonder what's going on back here. Sing now. What a cake. Yeah, I don't know if I can wait till dinner. Oop. Somebody at the door. Cake, you were saved by the bell. Yeah, that must be Peavy to pick up his hacksaw. Coming! Hello, Peavy. Yeah, hello, Mr. Yellow Speed. <laughs> Well, come in. Yeah, I guess you came for your hacksaw. Sorry I didn't get around to returning it. <laughs> That's all right. You've only had it a year. <laughs> Has it been that long? Yes, it's been a year since I've seen my saw. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my goodness. That is a little witticism, Mr. Gildersleeve. Seen saw. I got it. Well, if you're not going to laugh, you can't borrow my saw again. <laughs> All right, baby. That's the last time you'll see my saw. 
TV, please. <laughs> I tell you, Bertie's cooking up something in the kitchen. Huh? Well, she isn't here right now. But come on back. I want to show you something. Yeah, man. The most beautiful cake you've ever seen. Yeah. Feast your eyes on that. My, my. Is that all I can feast? <laughs> no, what the heck. Let's sample it. Well, I don't think we should, Mr. Gildersleeve. That, that's too beautiful to cut. No oh, nonsense. Probably for dinner. Bertie would be disappointed if you refused to sample her cake. Oh, well, if you put it that way. Sure. <laughs> Pull up a chair while I get some plates. Very well. There we are. Mm. Isn't often a man sees a cake like this. I bet that icing's an inch thick. Yeah. And see how it cuts. This cake is light as a feather. Yeah, in that case, I guess you can make the pieces pretty big. <laughs> you bet. There you are. Mm, thank you, Mr. Jonas Lee. No, oh, don't thank me. Thank Bertie. Let's pitch in. Mm, I'm pitching. Mm, mm, mm. This is a Jim Dandy. Mm. Yes, it is. Oh, it's the best cake I ever tasted. No, well, Bertie will be delighted to hear that. I'd like to have the recipe to take home to Mrs. Peavy's mother. Say, your mother-in-law is visiting you, isn't she? Yes, and she considers herself quite a cook. She could use a good recipe, I'm here to tell you. <laughs> well, here's Bertie's notebook on the sink, open at the recipe. Well, if you don't mind, I'll make a copy of it. No, not at all. It says, uh, flour, eggs, craft oil. Everything your mother-in-law wants is on this paper. Mr. Gildersleeve, you can't get everything my mother-in-law wants on one piece of paper. <laughs> Have a few, another piece of cake. Yeah, I never saw anybody enjoy cake the way Peavy did. <laughs> Say, I might just have another piece. Still an hour before dinner. Maybe longer. Bertie hasn't even come back from the market. Sure. If I eat this slice, the cake will be exactly half gone. You might as well be neat about this. Come in, Marvin. I'm in. Hi, Unc. Hello, Leroy. Marvin. Hi. Say, Unc. Unc, what are you doing? What does it look like I'm doing? Does Bertie know you're eating that cake? I haven't seen Bertie. Oh, boy. This is going to be blue. What's that? Unc, I hate to tell you this, but Bertie didn't want anybody to touch that cake. Leroy, I don't usually sample Bertie's desserts before dinner, but I wanted Mr. Peavy to try it. Mr. Peavy's in this, too? Mr. Peavy's smart. He beat it. <laughs> Marvin, what are you talking about? Look, Unc... Let him alone. The damage is done. But gosh, Marvin, Unc shouldn't have eaten that cake. Well, we probably did eat more than we should have. Uh, would you boys like a little sliver? Nuh-uh. That isn't like you, Leroy. How about you, Martin? I wouldn't touch it with a ten-foot pole. Oh? If I did and got run out of town, my parents would miss me. <laughs> run out of town? When I didn't come home for dinner, my parents would say, I wonder where Marvin is. Oh. And when they didn't come home to my little bed, they'd phone the police and say, where is Marvin? What's this all about? Pretty soon, everybody would be going around asking... Whatever happened to poor Marvin? <laughs> and my parents would phone you and say, Where is Marvin? And you'd say, Marvin was chased out of town by Bertie. <laughs> <laughs> Marvin, why would Bertie chase you out of town? She isn't going to chase me. I didn't eat her cake. <laughs> Aunt Bertie baked that cake for the county fair. <laughs> She did? Here she comes. Oh, my goodness. Let's get out of here, Marvin. Not me. I want a ringside seat. <laughs> I'm home, boys. Hello, Miss please. Hello, Bertie. My land, who's been into my cake? Not me. Not me. Me. <laughs> you, Miss Gill, please. Sorry, Bertie. I didn't know you baked it for the county fair. That cake was going to be the prize-winning cake. I had no idea, Bertie. I spent a lot of time on that cake. Now it's half gone. Oh, is it too late to bake another one for the fair? No, sir. I can bake another one. That is, if you didn't eat up that recipe, too. <laughs> you don't know. The recipe's right here. That's Bertie's secret recipe. 
secret recipe? Nobody ain't got that recipe but Bertie. You, well... I thought I was all set for the fair. <laughs> Sorry, Bertie. But it's such a wonderful cake, I couldn't... Re- it was a wonderful cake. Bertie whipped it up and put it in the oven, baked it, and iced it. It was a wonderful cake. I know, Bertie. Yes, sir, it was a wonderful cake. Yeah, Bertie, please. Miss Gilsey, you know what that cake is? Yes, Bertie. That's right, it was a wonderful cake. <laughs> said she'd bake another cake tender in the fair. Well, don't tell Bertie. But I let Peavy copy off her secret recipe. Mr. Peavy gonna bake a cake? No, he was gonna give it to his mother-in-law. First thing you know, everybody in town will have it. Oh, I get it. So I have to get the recipe from Peavy before anything like that happens. Gosh, Marvin and I could have saved you all this trouble. How? By eating the cake before you did. <laughs> yes, yes. Hello, Peavy. Oh, hello, Mr. Gildersleeve. Good evening, Roy. Hi. What can I do for you two? I'll have a double banana split. Not just before dinner. You <laughs> ate half a cake before dinner. <laughs> well, Mr. Gildersleeve, did you get in that cake again? Yeah, but I didn't know what I was eating. I did. I was eating cake. <laughs> <laughs> Peavy, that was Bertie's secret recipe. It was? And I'll have to ask you to give it back. Oh, I'm sorry, Mr. Gildersleeve, but Mrs. Peavy's mother came by the store and I gave it to her. Oh, my goodness. And I bragged on the cake so much, she said she was going to bake it and enter it in the county fair. Oh, brother. Peavy, that's exactly what Bertie's going to do. You don't change. And if somebody else turns up at the fair with a cake like Bertie's, I don't know what will happen. I do. Everybody will ask, what happened to poor Mr. Gildersleeve? <laughs> Leroy, this is serious. Yes, it is. You just have to go to your mother-in-law and forbid her to use the recipe. Mr. Gildersleeve, you just don't go to Mrs. Peavy's mother and forbid her. (laughs) Can't you explain things? Can't you make her see it your way? I find it difficult to get Mrs. Peavy's mother to see anything my way. Peavy, you've got to help me. I wish I could, Mr. Gildersleeve. Well, do it. Surely you're not afraid of your mother-in-law. Well, no, I wouldn't say that. <laughs> the Great Gildersleeve will be back in just a minute. Tonight, I'm going to tell you about a surprisingly different salad. One that'll be a special favorite with your youngsters. It's a salad that's full of vitamins, and it's a salad that's good eating, too. Because you top it with Miracle Whip salad dressing. Miracle Whip has just the lively, teasing flavor you like. A flavor you won't find in any other salad dressing. Because Miracle Whip is made from a secret craft recipe that combines the qualities of old-fashioned boiled dressing and fine, rich mayonnaise. Miracle Whip is blended with special craft beaters so carefully, so thoroughly, that Miracle Whip has the smoothest, creamiest texture you've ever seen in salad dressing. Mmm, what more could you ask? Just a super salad to go with this fine salad dressing, that's all. And here it is. Start with peeled bananas that you've sliced in half lengthwise. Dip the banana halves in lemon juice so they won't turn dark. Then spread one banana half with peanut butter and cover with a plain banana half. Place each peanut butter stuffed banana on some crispy lettuce and garnish with Miracle Whip and a maraschino cherry. Just try it. See how delicious it is. Bring home a jar of Miracle Whip salad dressing tomorrow and enjoy it on fruit salads, gelatin salads, vegetable salads, and on meat and seafood salads, too. It's America's favorite salad dressing, the one and only Miracle Whip. Well, the great Gildersleeve unwittingly ate the cake Bertie baked to enter in the county fair. And that isn't all. He gave Bertie's prize recipe to Mr. Peavy, who in turn gave it to his mother-in-law. Now he has to get it back. The least you can do is phone her, Peavy. Well, I'd rather phone her than ask her in person. (laughs) Is she dangerous? No, she isn't dangerous, Leroy. Surely she'll give back Bertie's recipe. 
She can't be that unreasonable. Well, I wouldn't say she's unreasonable. You wouldn't dare, huh? <laughs> it's just that she's hard to pin down. Well, go on and phone her, Pete. Yeah, very well. You mind if we listen? Well, I've been listening for years. I don't know why you shouldn't. <laughs> Mama, this is Richard. Nobody here but me, Richard. Well, Mama, you're just the one I want to talk to. Well, don't talk long. I've got a cake in the oven. Whoop. She's breaking it already. Mama, that cake is the reason I called. Oh, for pity's sake, how did you know I had it in the oven? You just told me. Well, I wondered. Because the only other person I've told is that Mrs. Clausen across the pen. Yeah. Tell her we want the recipe, Peavy. Uh, Mama, Mr. Gildersleeve wants the recipe. Now, doesn't that be all? Mrs. Coulson wants the recipe, too. But, Mr. Gildy, please... She you hooed to me across the fence when I came home. And I said to her, how do you do, Mrs. Coulson? And she said, if you have a minute, will you step over to the fence? And I was going over to the fence anyway. I see. So I said, why, yes, I'll come over to the fence because I was going over anyway. <laughs> you, you see, I wanted to show her the recipe... Are you still there, Richard? I'm still here. <laughs> and, Mama, don't give that recipe to anybody. Mr. Gildersleeve's housekeeper wants to enter it in the county fair. I don't blame her. That's exactly what I'm going to do. She can't do that. Mama, listen, Mr. Gildersleeve wants that recipe back. But you said he gave you the recipe to give to me. He did, but he's changed his mind. Well. Just because he's wishy-washy, I don't have to be. But, but Mama... If you take my advice, Richard, you'll associate with people who know their own mind. Peavy, tell her. Mama... I have to go now, Richard. I have a cake in the oven. Goodbye. But, Mama... Now, fiddlesticks. Goodbye. Peavy, why didn't you tell her? Like I say, you can't tell Mrs. Peavy's mother. <laughs> smell that wonderful cake again. Guess Bertie's got another one in the oven. What's she going to do when she takes her cake to the fair and sees one just like it? <laughs> well, it's all my fault. Best thing to do is go in and admit it. Yeah. Honest confession may be good for the soul, but it's hard on the nerves. <laughs> uh, Bertie? Yes, Miss Gilsley? Hey, about that cake of yours. I'm sorry to have to tell you. Oh, Miss Gilsey, forget about that cake. I got another one coming up that's better than the last one. You well, I know, but... Bertie, don't blame you for eating that other cake. When you slipped in and ate that cake, that was a compliment to Bertie's cooking. Yeah, but Bertie, what I want to explain... You don't have to explain nothing, Miss Gilsey. You slipped in and ate it, and if cake's that good, it's bound to win the first prize. Yeah, well, I agree, Bertie, There won't but... be any cake at that fair as good as Bertie's secret recipe cake. But what if somebody else baked a cake just like it? How can they do that? I'm the only one that's got the recipe, and we ain't got no spies around here. Yo, no, no. But if anybody comes sabotaging around here, Bertie's the after with the frying pan. <laughs> <laughs> Gee, I feel like Benedict Arnold. <laughs> so happy I can't tell her I gave away her cake recipe. You know, I have to think of something. Yeah, guess I'll step in Floyd's and get a haircut. Maybe if I get some of the hair off my head, I can think better. Well, if it ain't the commish. Hello, Floyd. I thought you was due for a haircut. Hop up in the chair. Uh, just a trim, Floyd. Sure. Hey, I saw you jaywalking across the street. I wish you wouldn't do that, commish. Was I jaywalking? Yeah. The police have a drive on now, and it makes me nervous to cut hair in the jail. <laughs> well, jail might be a good place for me, Floyd. What's the matter, Commish? You short at the water department? <laughs> of course not, Floyd. I'm worried because I'll be in trouble with Bertie when the county fair opens tomorrow. She wants the day off? No, it isn't that. I'm taking the day off. I always had a soft spot for fairs. That's where I met my wife, Lovey. Oh? Yeah. 
On the Ferris wheel. The Ferris wheel? Yep. We was total strangers, but the man thought we was together and put us in the same seat. It was sort of fate-like. Well, that's how you met, huh? Uh, you ain't heard the half of it. The wheel stuck when we was right at the top. We ran out of things to talk about, and by the time they got us down, we was engaged. <laughs> So that's how it happened. Yep. And the guy didn't even give us a refund. <laughs> What's Bertie's beef? Well, Bertie baked the most wonderful cake to enter in the county fair. Oh, nobody can cook any better than Bertie. Of course, I don't get invited over to your place very often. Soon, Floyd. Uh -huh. Soon. Yeah. Anyway, as I was saying, before I knew Bertie was entering the cake, I gave the recipe to Peavy, and he gave it to his mother-in-law. Yeah. Now she's going to enter the same cake in the fair. Well, why don't you tell Peavy to get the recipe back from his mother-in-law, Commish? Well, Peavy tried, but he didn't get very far. Well, you got to be cagey when you're dealing with in-laws. You know how I handled mine? How? I moved to another town. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my goodness. Mrs. Peavy's mother didn't seem to understand the situation. Why don't you call on her personally, Commish? Me? Hey, you got away with women. Well, I... Right, George, why don't I go out there and have a talk with her? Yeah, turn on the charm. When she understands that Bertie has prior rights to the recipe, we won't have any trouble. Nah, and you still got an ace up your sleeve. Yeah? You tell her if she don't give it back, you'll cut off Peavy's water. <laughs> <laughs> considered of you, Peavy, to come along and introduce me to your mother-in-law. Well, I'm happy to do it for Bertie. But I'm going to introduce you, and that's all, Mr. Gildersleeve. Well, no. don't worry. I'll take it from there. I'll come right to the point. <laughs> it's pretty hard to get my way to come to the point. Yeah, you're just gun-shy, Peavy. Who's there? It's me, Mama. Richard. Hope you watched your feet on the mat before you came in. Yes, I did. Mr. Gildersleeve, every time I come into this house, she sticks a broom in my hand. It puts you to work, huh? Just can't stand an untidy house. Oh, company. And I'm not tidied up. Well, I'm not company, Mama. This is Mr. Gildersleeve. How, how do you do, Mrs. Uh, uh, Mama? Delighted to meet you. So you're Mr. Gildersleeve. I declare, Richard, he reminds me of somebody I know back home. Oh? Now, let me see. Is it one of the Sherwood boys? No. No, it's the man who cleans out my furnace. Oh, <laughs> he gets so dirty. Yeah, well, the reason I came over... You know, all of my neighbors put in oil furnaces, but I've stuck to coal. There's something solid about coal. <laughs> You're so right. Mama, Mr. Gildersleeve came over to talk to you about that cake recipe. Yeah, you see, Mrs. Uh, uh, Mama... I... Oh, I bet you want to see my cake come right into the kitchen. Well, I'm sure it's a very wonderful cake, but... Wonderful? It's going to win first prize, that's all. There it sits on the kitchen table. Isn't that a beauty? Mm, yes, it is. It looks just like Bertie's. By the way, I mustn't forget to give the recipe to Mrs. Clausen across the fence. You know, about the recipe, Bertie is very anxious that nobody use it. Oh, she can't be. Why would she give it away in the first place? You were, that was my fault. As a matter of fact, Bertie is entering her cake in the county fair. And... That's exactly what I plan to do. You see what I mean, Mr. Gildersleeve? Yeah, I think I do. But, Mama, since it's Bertie's mystery recipe... There's no mystery about it. It's written right here on a piece of paper. But, Bertie... I've never seen a cook yet who wasn't flattered if somebody wanted her favorite recipe. But in this case... Of course, it... she may not admit it. Like the woman back home, what is her name? She's a member of my sewing circle. What is her name? You will, it'll come to you. Now well, then... say I get so put out with myself for not remembering. Anyway, when I came here to visit at Richard, she sent me a postcard. Now, where did I put that postcard? Well, if I were you, I wouldn't worry about it right now. Let's get back to Bertie. If you'll excuse me just a minute, I'll find that postcard. What is her name? What is her name? Peavy, I give up. 
That's what it is. <laughs> Richard! Uh, yes, Mama? While I think about it, will you put my cake in the cupboard? Uh, very well, Mama. I'd like to have a piece of this cake. Too bad she's sending it to the fair. Why, George, it's now or never. Something has to happen to that cake. <laughs> Phoebe, how about letting me put the cake in the cupboard? I'm taller than you. And I'd hate to drop it. Yes, indeed. <laughs> of course, if I should drop it, it'd be an accident. It'd be an accident, all right. <laughs> Let go of the cake, Phoebe. Uh, Mr. Gildersleeve, on second thought, Mama asked me to... Give me the cake, Phoebe. Mr. Gildersleeve. Oh! Now, look at that. All over the floor. <laughs> Yeah, I'll take the blame. Richard, what was that crack? No, I take it. <laughs> Sorry, Mama. I dropped the cake. Oh, what a pity. Well, Richard, you won't have any for dinner. That cake was for my dinner? Well, I thought you were going to compete with Bertie in the county fair. Oh, I wasn't going to enter it in your fair. You weren't? No, this was a test cake. When I get home, I'm going to bake one for my county fair. Oh, that's different. Yes, it is. Richard, get the broom and sweep up. I've got the broom and I'm going to mop up. Phoebe, don't you put down that broom. Great Gildersleeve will be with us again in just 30 seconds. Mom, make that job of sandwich fixing for the lunchbox brigade easier. Post a list of favorite sandwich fillers in the kitchen so you won't find yourself out of ideas at the last minute. And for your egg salad, meat salad, or seafood salad fillers, be sure you use the salad dressing everyone likes. Miracle Whip salad dressing. Miracle Whip has a wonderful, lively, teasing flavor. A flavor millions call just right. For truly delicious sandwiches, get the one and only Miracle Whip salad dressing. Leroy! Yeah, Bertie? My cake won first prize at the fair. Yeah! Congratulations, Bertie! Miss Gill, please? Yes, Bertie? My cake took the blue ribbon and took the first prize at the fair. Yeah, I heard about that. Congratulations, Bertie. Hey, where is the cake? Oh, I gave it away. Oh, grown. You gave it away, Bertie? Yes, I gave it to Mr. Peavy and his mother-in-law. You did? Yes, sir. When you dropped her cake, you were trying to do the right thing by me, so I tried to do the right thing by you. Yeah, thanks, Bertie. Why doesn't somebody do the right thing by me? <laughs> I haven't even tasted the cake. I'll bake you another one, Leroy. Well. Bertie's prize winning cake. Say, the craft people will be interested in Bertie's cake recipe. And I'll bet all of our friends will, too. So uh, listen in next week, everybody, and see what happens. Have your ears glued to the radio. Won't that be uncomfortable? <laughs> Leroy. Good night, folks. Great Gill is made by Willard Waterman and is an NBC Radio Network production. The show is written by John Elliott and Andy White and his friend Tribe. Included in the cast are Walter Shetley, Lillian Randolph, Duffy Singer, Arthur Bryan, Elizabeth Patterson, and Dick LeGrand. Musical compositions by Jack Meekin. This is John Heaston saying good night for the Kraft Food Company, makers of the famous line of Kraft quality food products. Be sure to listen in next Wednesday and every Wednesday for the further adventures of the Great Gildersleeve. <laughs> You know, done up just right, a delicious hamburger can be truly a gourmet's delight. A big deal in eating pleasure. Of course, just about every good cook knows that a dash of craft prepared mustard really makes a hamburger. Because when you add a little mustard, you add a lot of tang. Craft mustard, naturally. There are two kinds of craft prepared mustard. Mild craft mustard, if you like it smooth and delicately spiced. Snappy craft mustard with horseradish added, if you like it zippy. Get both kinds of craft prepared mustard at your food store.
Tonight, enjoy You Bet Your Life with Groucho Marx on NBC. 